Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Tuesday to all of you. And we get the official CPCA data for Tesla out of Shanghai, 70,847 for December. And that did include 245 vehicles for export for the month. Plugging that data into the chart, in December, Tesla sold 34% more vehicles than it did in November, bringing the total to 473,000 for 2021. So this is almost exactly half of Tesla's total sales for 2021 coming from the Shanghai factory and 152,000 exports from Shanghai. So exports are about 30% of the volume in Shanghai. I think the most important takeaway here is if you extrapolate the December figure for 12 months into 2022, that turns out to about 850,000 vehicles before the Giga Shanghai expansion that is expected to take place over the first half of 2022. Remember, most of Wall Street is sitting around 1.3 million deliveries expected for this year. So can Tesla pump out, say, 500,000 from Fremont, Shanghai, and Berlin combined? I would be pretty confident in saying yes. And for some context from the competition in the Shanghai market, NIO delivered 10,489 cars in December, Xpeng was at 16,000, Volkswagen was 13,787 for the full ID series lineup, and the overall passenger car sales were down 7.7% from the year before. And a fun fact for you, given these December figures, Tesla surpassed the Wuling Mini for the first time. What is that, you may ask? Well, here you have it. It is one of the better selling EVs in China, and it only went on sale in July of 2020 but it's not really a great Tesla comparison because it only has a 9.2 kilowatt hour battery capable of an NEDC range of 75 miles. However, obviously a huge portion of the Chinese market is looking for a small car just like this, small and affordable. The kilowatts on Twitter shared some images of the new Model S and X from the event we had discussed yesterday. The Model S does seem to have new headlights and taillights, as well as the new native CCS charging port. I'm showing you this blurry image because there used to be a black strip connecting the taillights on the Model S that seems to be gone. On. I wanted to show you this though as the Model X might not have the new matrix style headlights just yet if this video is any indication it was uploaded today as you can see take this design right here and compare it to the new Model S so they look different to me. However, the big story here was definitely the new charge port. So in international markets, now the SNX to follow the lead of the Model 3 and Y will have the native CCS2 charging port. As I mentioned yesterday, before they had to use an adapter to use a supercharger or other third-party DC fast charging stations. So here we have the image of the new port and how the door swings open. And yes, there is also a quick video clip. This news item about Giga Berlin came out today and I wanted to bring it up just to maybe provide some clarity. I do not think this has a direct indication to Tesla getting final approval to open the factory and begin production at a bigger scale. This just has to do with the drinking water availability at Tesla and the water supply, at least as far as I can tell. So I don't want people out there to panic or you know get too crazy just yet. Due to a legal dispute, several associations see drinking water in the region as a problem. Environmental associations have sued the State Office for the Environment. The Frankfurt Administrative Court is expecting a decision on this in February. These environmental groups, the NABU and Green League, said on Tuesday important information was missing to be able to determine whether an increase in the water abstraction would be sustainable. The Responsible Water Association, which is supposed to supply Tesla, doubts a guarantee of the water supply and is concerned about the ongoing legal proceedings. Here's the main point. If the water law permit is revoked, Invoked, the adequate supply of drinking water to Tesla is no longer guaranteed, said Association Chairman Andre Baylor. Once again, I am interpreting this to not have an impact on Tesla's final approval to begin production at Giga Berlin. This is just a separate drinking water issue, but please correct me below if I'm wrong, you have other information, etc. And look, we've talked at length about the coal plants and other automakers who are using plenty of water, most likely much more than Tesla, that aren't really getting any flack for what they're doing. And you have this on March 20th last year, Brandenburg released an official statement from the Ministry of Environment. Currently, there is sufficient groundwater resources for the production of drinking water, as well as for the supply of trade and industry. This applies to both the quantity of water 
and its quality. So the saga continues. Another instance here where I hope to provide some peace of mind, apparently this Twitter user David Colombo said, so I now have full remote control over 20 Teslas in 10 countries. There seems to be no way to find the owners and report it to them. However, what I am picking up from reading about this is that it's not Tesla's fault, first and foremost. This is not like a Tesla breach or anything like that. It is rather a third party app that some Tesla users integrate to share essentially their data with, like the Tesla Stats app. I'm not saying that was the specific one, but one like that. It's assumed this has to do with API tokens or the application programming interface, basically the way that these third party apps will get authenticated and be allowed access to the Tesla data. Once again, David says, this is not a vulnerability in Tesla's infrastructure. I cannot emphasize that enough. And if you're wondering, he said, what I'm able to do includes disabling sentry mode, opening the doors and windows and starting keyless driving. Luckily, this David cat seems to be a solid dude and he's not looking to cause any problems. He's looking to notify the owners and he's trying to do that and to find a solution. He also added, it is not full remote control as in being able to remotely control steering or acceleration or braking. And yes, I know it's only 20 people. However, I also know that human nature is to think, well, am I one of the 20? So if that's you, I would just relax. It is most likely not you. It's not Tesla's fault and it should be resolved soon. Some of you guys are going to love this. Update 44.30.5 resets the FSD disengagements counter to zero. Let these celebrations begin. We've reset the forced autopilot disengagements to counter your vehicle to zero. To be clear, a disengagement is when the autopilot system disengages for the remainder of a trip after the driver receives several audio and visual warnings for inattentiveness. Driver initiated disengagements do not count as improper usage and are expected from the driver. Keep your hands on the wheel and remain attentive at all times. I don't have a definite reason as to why Tesla is doing this now. My first guess would be that they've made some changes to the algorithm and the software, and they want to start fresh and see how things play out from here. From Ava Fox at Tesmanian, a very big German automobile club is expecting to lease up to 600 Tesla vehicles to its members. These vehicles are being purchased by the German automobile club, ADAC for its members. Delivery is expected to be completed in the next two to three months. It should be noted Noted that yes, all of them have already been rented out. And yes, 600 is a small number. However, it's one of those things integrating Teslas into an organization, which by the way has 20 million members will just help to get butts in seats, more people exposed to Tesla, and you know what happens from there. ADAC is the largest public organization of drivers in Germany and the largest in Europe. It's the second largest auto club in the world. The main function of this organization is technical, informational, and legal assistance to drivers. Great tweet here from Holmars. In Q3 2021, Tesla made an average of $15,444 in gross profit per vehicle delivered. Now, to give you some context for Toyota, for the entirety of 2021, gross profit per vehicle sold was $6,014, and Ford, he had to go back to 2019, but the number still was $8,799. And just so you guys know, I always do try to fact check if I can, so I just took Tesla's Q3 gross automotive profit, which was $3.673 billion, yes, I rounded, and took the deliveries for the same quarter, $241,300, did the math, and yes, gives us about the same result as Holmar shared. A great reminder here that Teslas don't have to be babied or treated differently than ICE vehicles because I know some people still think that. Craig Coker said, it's incredible how well this car held up since 2018. 66,000 miles, 95% of it was supercharging, 45 track days, 10 lap records, still running hard with original untouched motors and battery. Elon, I implore you to tap into my car's data. You may find benefits to it. Jeff Robert shared another Gigapress for Giga Texas. This makes four in total. Some people are speculating, oh, is one for the Cybertruck, one's bigger. The answer is nobody knows for sure. I don't wanna add any unnecessary speculation, so we'll find out soon enough. Elon replied to this clean technical article, solar power will account for about half of new United States electric generating capacity in 2022. 
So no, this is not total capacity, just the new installed capacity, half of it is expected to be solar. Elon said, most people have no idea how fast sustainable energy is growing. And to that point, I wanted to share another great article from Canary Media. Julian Spector is the author of this article and I will link this below as they have a nice blog. He was essentially reviewing his predictions for 2021. It was indeed the top year for US grid storage installations by far. After achieving one gigawatt of annual installations for the first time in 2020, US energy storage companies just installed one gigawatt of projects in one quarter. This was for the third quarter of 2021. The states building out the biggest capacity, California, Texas, and Arizona. And let's not forget, if somehow Build Back Better makes its way back around in the next few months, that will be a huge tailwind also for Tesla Energy. Mansion's opposition stalls not just the storage tax credit, but half a trillion dollars of climate-related spending, which yes, is a more transformational package than what Congress passed in 2021. This right here is also very underrated. Companies he was covered raising 10 to $15 million rounds a few years ago have transformed into publicly traded entities with billion dollar market caps. Why does this matter? Well, because now they have seed money and more money to expand their production. And listen to this in terms of scale and what's going on. So we know California had rolling blackouts and some grid problems last year. Well, the regulators ordered power companies to buy 11.5 gigawatts of zero carbon capacity by 2026. Lithium ion batteries, yes, are the favorite answer to the problem. To get a sense of the market acceleration, recall a total of one gigawatt of storage capacity was added in the entire United States in all of 2020. Now, all of that data was just for grid energy storage. So shifting to the Clean Technica article, they say in 2022, they're expecting 46.1 gigawatts of new utility scale electric generating capacity to be added to the US power grid. Almost half of the planned capacity additions are for solar, then natural gas at 21% and wind at 17. Now linking back to the canary data, talking grid energy storage, we expect US utility scale battery storage capacity to grow by 5.1 gigawatts or 84% in 2022. I will link these two articles below if you'd like to read more. I've mentioned before that the Hyundai Ionic 5 has received excellent reviews and now the Ionic 6 is set to debut sometime this year, but it probably won't go on sale until 2023, at least in the United States. There isn't really a ton of information available yet, but some photographers captured this image of it being tested. And yes, it is loosely based on Hyundai's prophecy concept, which you see right here. Last up for today, Rivian COO has left the company. They are saying that he was planning to retire. However, they also say that there is no succession plan in place. Those two don't really add up well, but have a listen for yourself. Thank you guys for watching. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. We've got a market flash right now on Rivian. Let's get to Phil LeBeau on the news line. Phil. Sarah, take a look at shares of Rivian, which are uh, under pressure and we're under pressure again today, down about four and a half percent. The company COO, Rod Copes, uh, departed the company in December. This was initially reported by Dow Jones. We have confirmed it with Rivian. Rivian says that Mr. Cope's departure was part of a month-long planned retirement. Nonetheless, his departure while the company was ramping up production in uh, December is yet one more headline that will have people saying, okay, where is this company as it tries to roll out three different products at the same time? Uh, a challenge for any company, but especially a startup uh, like Rivian. So again, shares of uh, under uh, Rivian under pressure following the departure of Rod Copes. At this point, Rivian says his duties will be observed, absorbed by others in the management team. No plan at this point to name a specific person as the next COO. Guys, back to you.